I'm Dr. Pippin Kojujoyo. I'm a heart specialist at uh, Asian Heart and Vascular Centre. We are based at uh, Mount Elizabeth Hospitals. Specifically, I'm a heart rhythm specialist or a cardiac electrophysiologist. Uh, lay people call us the electricians of the heart. Uh, and we specifically look after patients with heart rhythm problems. So I think most people uh, don't realize that actually uh, we life depends on uh, our heart uh, beating regularly and that regular beating is actually driven by the presence of electricity. And so from roughly about four weeks in our mommy's tummy until the last day that we live, uh, our heart will beat more than three billion times. Uh, and if you have heartbeats that are too slow or too few, uh, on the other extreme, heartbeats that are too many or too fast, those are all considered heart rhythm uh, abnormalities. Uh, and patients can have symptoms such as dizziness, blackouts, palpitations, which is the sensation the heart beats very fast, uh, they can feel chest pain, uh, and for very, very few patients, they can unfortunately even experience a cardiac arrest or sudden death. Uh, I think compared to how we were practicing 10, 15 years ago, uh, things are very different now. So I think that I can talk about three key advancements. The first is the wide availability of smartwatches that have ECG recording capabilities. This actually allow, allows a lot of our patients to find out more about their heart rhythm and their heart rates. And it does help us to make the diagnosis more easily. Uh, the second advancements are in the field of doing uh, treatments for fast heartbeats. So nowadays, if you have a fast heart rhythm or uh, an irregular heart rhythm, uh, almost all of them can be treated using a procedure called catheter ablation. This is whereby we use very specialized energies and we correct the way that the heart is beating. So we correct the electrical flow and so that we can make irregular or abnormal heartbeats go back to normal. And we can do this with a very, very high degree of success so much so that they are at least three to four times better than patients taking lifelong medication. Um, on the other extreme, we all know about pacemakers, but with recent advances in pacemaker technology, we now have uh, pacemakers that are so small, they are one-sixth the weight of a AAA battery, and this can be implanted very easily for our patients without the need for a scar or any kind of complex surgery. So in many ways, treatments have gotten better, they've gotten easier for our patients, uh, and they're also more accessible to more people. So I think for the general public, um, a lot of them, uh, their understanding of heart diseases uh, is quite uh, narrow uh, and uh, just by having no blockages doesn't mean that your heart is healthy. Um, and so there are heart rhythm conditions, there are conditions that affect the strength of the heart muscles uh, and there are also diseases that affect the valves in our heart. So all those things are, uh, are important for the normal healthy functioning of the heart uh, and it's essential uh, that people are more aware that there can be other forms of heart disease except blocked arteries. I think that the most important thing for patients to know is that if they have symptoms, they don't feel well, uh, they should certainly, they must see their doctor to get evaluation. Many, many things can be treated very successfully and the success of treatment is even better if you treat it at an early stage of, of most heart rhythm diseases. The other thing that they should be aware is that for patients at risk, those who are older in age, or perhaps those who take on very, very rigorous sports activities, those who have risks such as diabetes or high blood pressure, a regular checkup is good because that way we can help screen for uh, not only heart rhythm, but any kind of heart diseases. So 
so a, a really exciting development in, in cath ablation which we'll see roll out in Singapore for the first time over the next few months uh, is this technology called pulse field ablation and so this is going to come to Asia for the first time uh, and uh, we will be uh, launching it in Singapore over the next few months now traditionally when we have abnormal short circuits within the heart uh, we want to correct the way electricity flows through the heart and we would normally either sort of burn uh, the heart muscle uh, this is what we call radio frequency ablation or we would freeze the heart muscle uh, this is called cryoablation so it involves extremes of temperature and we change the property of the muscle so that the abnormal electrical current stops and the normal electrical rhythm can start now pulse field ablation uh, is different to these two traditional technologies what we now do is that without heating or freezing the tissue we can change the electrical property of the tissue now why is this important because it allows us to treat the heart without affecting anything around the heart so things like blood vessels nerves even our food pipe the esophagus all these things can be changed if we either heat or freeze the heart and so by not changing any temperatures but yet still able to correct the abnormal heart rhythms it allows us to make the ablation process even safer than what it is now and possibly even more effective um, in terms of implants yes we uh, uh, one of the big uh, areas that we work on uh, is that one of the most common heart rhythm condition is called atrial fibrillation and atrial fibrillation increases the risk of our patients getting a stroke by five times so 500 percent and often for these patients uh, we advise them to take blood thinners uh, daily regularly and for the rest of their lives now some patients are unable to tolerate these blood thinners or they may have high bleeding risk for whatever reason uh, perhaps they are prone to falling or they have already had bleeding events in the past and so now we have uh, implants uh, that essentially act as a barrier to stop clots from leaving the heart going into the circulation and potentially entering their brain and by using these implant technologies uh, we are able to achieve stroke prevention for our patients as good as taking blood thinners now the name of these implants are uh, typically called left atrial appendage occluders uh, there are several brands for them uh, but uh, the most important thing is that they act the same way essentially they uh, are able to reduce the risk of stroke without having to take long-term blood thinners for the, the appropriate patients um, I mentioned earlier that there are these leadless pacemakers so if you think about a AAA battery and you cut the AAA battery into six pieces one of that small piece can act as a pacemaker and they can be inserted from your leg um, all the way into the heart left in the heart and it will keep the heart beating for eight to ten years uh, this is something that can be done very very easily and for many of our patients uh, they can go back to uh, exercising the following day so this is uh, something that uh, is uh, quite remarkable uh, and we expect more and more patients to benefit from such technologies in the future In our clinics we've seen over the last two years uh, many patients presenting with heart rhythm disturbances or arrhythmias one of which is atrial fibrillation and many of these patients are coming with their arrhythmias for the first time a few weeks after uh, developing a COVID-19 infection we have also seen in the US whereby there are more patients diagnosed with heart rhythm conditions if that state has a higher uh, rate of COVID-19 infection so it seems like the states that have higher rates have more arrhythmias the states that have lower rates have lower arrhythmias now whether this is a transient phenomenon whereby the arrhythmia gets better in the first year or it really creates uh, a whole new pandemic 
of heart rhythm conditions uh, over the next few years. Uh, this one we don't know and, and we will see uh, what happens over the next few years. So uh, patients at Mount Elizabeth have access to the latest uh, ablation technology uh, that are available not just uh, in Asia but actually across the world. Um, in addition to that, we have access to a whole range of implants uh, uh, which uh, covers everything from pacemakers to left atrial appendage occlusions to ICDs. Um, there are more than 10 heart rhythm specialists uh, in Mount, Mount Elizabeth hospitals who collectively have done uh, more than 10,000 cases. So uh, we have a very experienced team of doctors looking after the patients at Mount Elizabeth hospitals. Uh, and I think that makes uh, it a good center for the treatment of heart rhythm conditions.